Hola, classe. Now we're moving on to the next step in literary evolution, didactic literature. Didactic comes from the Greek word for teacher, vivaskalos. So these are stories, poems, essays, and plays that teach people how to survive in the world that the myths already established. Now that might sound similar to myths because mythology explains how the world got the way it is. However, there's a slight difference. Myths usually focus on the religious or supernatural explanations behind biological or supernatural events. Didactic literature asks, what comes next? How are we supposed to behave in this harsh and unpredictable world? Didactic literature usually focuses on moral or political lessons rather than religious or biological ones. In fact, didactic literature can go against the established religious rules or ignore them altogether. As you read this unit, see how many of the assigned texts ever mention God, goddesses, or gods. Like myths, the first didactic stories, poems, speeches, and plays were composed orally by many reciters over time. Later, with the invention of writing, didactic essays took shape. Early oral forms included fables, mystery plays, sermons, and parables. Fictional didactic tales like fables may use magical events or animal characters to make a point, but not all the time. For example, Aesop's fable of the tortoise and the hare gives animal characters human personalities in order to make a point. On the other hand, the parable of the prodigal son uses human characters to teach a different point. Most didactic literature explicitly states the thesis or the main point or moral of the story somewhere near the end of the text. If it doesn't though, try to figure out what lesson each piece is trying to teach. Also consider what those morals or lessons tell you about the cultures and authors that created each piece. Finally, keep in mind that didactic literature has always been popular in cultures throughout the world. While many people in Western cultures, especially the United States, look down on didactic writing as boring or preachy, that's often based on the idea that art should just exist for art's sake, that art should only be beautiful and decorative. Yet many cultures have always believed that art can be both beautiful or delightful and useful. Like a gorgeous plate that also holds your food. So as you read the didactic words assigned for this unit, Consider the beauty, the humor, the joy, and fun contained in each piece. Didactic literature mostly tries to entertain and to instruct. So don't miss the entertainment looking for the instruction.